scene one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Jimmy's Garage. Uh, we left Moab two days ago. Uh, I took a flight. <laughs> Back to my house, and, and I left you in the car to drive it home. How did that go? Uh, that was 2,984 miles in pretty much 48 hours. Um, truck itself did fantastic. Um, we do have a vacuum leak on the intake, as I discovered. Power steering belt left the chat somewhere in the middle of Nebraska at 4 o'clock in the morning. Bye-bye power steering. Uh, other than that, it was a great ride. So fortunately, Nebraska is flat and straight for five or 6,000 miles. <laughs> so it didn't so need power steering. Power steering just hung, hung a finger on the wheel. Yeah. The okay, when we were in Moab, we looked at the brakes, it needs rear brakes. It needs a, some proportioning valve, doohickey in the back. Yeah, it's not uh, working that well. There's some leaks and things like that. So what are yep. we doing today? Today, I say we start with the brakes. Since have all the parts here, we'll just go through the brakes, get that done, um, go out in the parking lot and give it a test and make sure it's working. Okay, ready? Yep. Do both at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one, crash! <laughs> It'll be fine. What's this thing called? Knuckle? Yes. With the... it, it's a ball and knuckle or closed knuckle system. Okay. Yeah. So this entire knuckle or spindle or kingpin, whatever you want to call yeah. it, comes apart and then you rebuild it. But you don't want to rebuild it right now because you have to take the whole thing apart. Yes, if we're going to put a locker in the front, you basically have to completely disassemble this so you can pull the axles out to get the differential out. Okay, so if we don't want to do a locker, is it worth rebuilding? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so because when we get the locker parts in, we're going to rebuild it. Do it all at once. Because and then we'll get rid of this leak. there's two bearings, one on top, one below, and they trunnion bearings basically. And what happens because, you know, as you drive down the road, you're pretty much hunting to keep it in line. So what happens is these bearings get indexed or they get worn in one spot okay. just from kind of keeping going straight down the road. And with almost 200,000 miles on this, because it is also all wheel drive, part time, full time, whatever you want to call it, the axles in here, which are a CV joint called a Burfield by Toyota, get very worn out and start clicking and making a racket, which these ones are. So we need to replace the burr fields. So if we're going to replace the burr fields and do a locker, we'll just do the whole thing at once. Both we'll sides. do the inner axle seals that okay. are leaking. We'll do the wipers on the ball that are leaking. We'll do the wheel bearings, trunnion bearings, do the whole thing one shot. Rather than pulling it apart, putting it back together multiple times. All right. So after we get the rear lockers, wheels and tires, we'll come in there and do the whole thing. Do okay. the whole axle, Good. one end to the other. This is bitching. Yeah. Um, like, bam, that's where the rock goes, right? Uh, <laughs> Mangles that, cracks Actually, that. all the 40 series Land Cruisers, this is what we upgrade the steering to. Because 40 series has a box back here, mm -hmm. and it's got a relay rod that comes up Ugh. to another relay to go across. So when you do this conversion, you get rid of one rod and three joints, basically. So this is an upgrade. So this is the early one that you retrofit to the later one. Uh, or the other yes. Way yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So this has got all the toys on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. This is actually a good it setup. It looks great. It's strong. I mean, it's it's a strong setup. Because I always look, you know, right here. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Sometimes the whole thing's gone. Yeah. Jeeps, yeah. Jeeps do that. Right? Jeeps do that. But yeah, thirty sevens on these stock. And that clears. Minimal good. issues. Yeah. Depending on the skinny pedal and how you treat that. Sure. Like yeah. anything. I am going to disassemble and attempt to rebuild caliper. Back in the day, this is how we always did it, and I haven't rebuilt caliper in a long time. And when I saw caliper rebuild kits for these, I had to give it a shot, because just to see if I could still do it. These were brand new pads 3,000 miles ago. They took it a little hard. Actually, it looks like we might have a little bit of Moab in there. 
So cut a piece of wood, basically putting it in between the four pistons. I'm going to pressurize it, and I want the wood to basically stop the pistons. Uh, the challenge with rebuilding a four piston is getting all four to come out at the same time. Uh, years ago, I used to have an expansion plug that I would put inside the piston and use a slide hammer to pull out, but I no longer have that. But I may, may need to go shopping if this doesn't work. We'll see what happens. You definitely want to cover it because you're going to get brake fluid exploding out of here. Basically, just watch your fingers. Well, at least one's already popped. What did we get? Yep, we just got one. So there's that piston. And now I've got the struggle. It may be a little ugly, but my little custom bronze hammer here seems to fit inside the cup nicely. Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Custom. That's a new little tool, for sure. What do you use this for? Uh, anything I don't want to damage. Um, I actually made that um, to uh, put ring gears on carriers for differentials okay. to tap, so it, tap on it on so okay. I wouldn't damage it because I didn't have one at my disposal when I was doing the gear set. Think I'd get this through TSA? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> These are the cups out of our calipers. You can see there's a lot of just kind of goo and dirt that gets packed in there. And this is actually what will hang up your brakes and make them seize up. So I'm just taking a piece of old worn out scotch brite and I'm just cleaning them radially. You don't want to go laterally, longitudinally, because you're trying to keep fluid back. So just like a honing a cylinder or something, you don't want to uh, go straight up and down. You want to go around radially, just kind of get all this goo off. So the pistons slide nice and free, and then we'll start assembly. Rebuild kit. So these are our seals, They're just kind of a square O-ring. I want to get some brake fluid on those, lube them up nicely. Definitely want to lube your seals. You definitely want to make sure that the seal is sitting down there flush and square and not rolled over. Sometimes these are really tough to go in. On a single piston setup, it's actually pretty easy. You just pump some air into it while you're pushing down. With these, it's a little more difficult. Hopefully, if you can at least get one in, then what you can do is clamp that one in and put air to it and the air will actually rush up around and spread the, the seal or the o-ring out while you're pushing down on the piston and it'll pop right in. But because these are a dual on each side that can be a little tough to do. So far I'm being very lucky and I'd rather be lucky than good. These are going in nice. Here we have basically our dust seal. And it's got a square outside that goes out here, and then a square inside that goes around the piston. So you want to get that on the piston nice and straight, and then get that on the outside without folding the seal under. And once that's all nice and in, then you've basically just got a keeper lock ring that goes on the outside to keep the dust boot down. So four bolts hold this together and you got these two machine surfaces and these are actually the passages in between the two halves. So you have those little square O-rings that go right there. And then you just put your four bolts in. Try not to move it very much. 
There is a little recess for those O-rings, so they generally stay in there pretty good. And it always pays to keep the two halves separate because believe it or not, you can put the two wrong halves together. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Time for reassembly. The beauty of these is you can put the pads in after the fact. Okay. Throw the pads back in. I'm just putting the used ones back in because I've got new ones coming, but they're not here yet. And then we have our little spreader here. Oops, helps you put it on the right way. This just spreads the pads apart to try and keep some of the rattle to a minimum. Come on, get in your hole. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Come on, you're all nice and clean. Get in there. There we go. And then you just have a little retainer pin to hold the retainer pins. Goes in like that. And that, and that safety locks into there. So here I have a drum measuring tool. And basically put it on the inside. It says we have 297 millimeters. And it maxes out at 297 millimeters. I need a bleeder. <laughs> Or do you want a pump? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll pump. I'll, I'll sit in the car. All right. You need to spend Ooh, some time in this. Don't dump it off the jack. All right. <laughs> want to see Doug's nervous face? <laughs> Look how small the Ojeda's hand is. Make my hand look really big. Pop the hood for me. <laughs> Is that it? Nope, that's a gas door. <laughs> it's right beside it on the outside. There it is. Another little trick in these style of masters because you just have a single fill with the hole, especially if you're working by yourself, just invert the bottle. Physics 101, when the fluid goes up, you can't get any air displacement in there. As the fluid levels, air will displace, fluid will come out, you won't run your master dry. Or you can make friends and they can help you. <laughs> All right, the last thing to bleed on this, reading the book, it says start from the farthest from the master cylinder, work the closest, and then finish off with the LSPD, which is where I'm at now. And go ahead, Doug. Pressure. Yep. Oh, and it's a good thing we bled this system. This fluid is pretty old. Yep, there's definitely air in there. And a lot of crud, my goodness. This has never been bled. Uh, we got, what is this, 11 ounces? We got about 22 ounces. Through the system, it's coming out clear, no air bubbles. We're gonna put tires on, take it out in the parking lot and give it a brake check. Looks like a health drink. I've seen people drink worse. <laughs> I'm gonna to go to the back of the parking lot, give it a brake check and hopefully it's gonna stop. Oh All right, so it locked the front brakes like it's oh, supposed to. Totally locked them right up, yeah. yeah. So the idea behind that proportioning valve is to keep the rears from locking in a panic stop because that will swing the back of the car around. Gotcha. And you want to protect people from <laughs> yeah. having the back of the car swing around. That is. So it's going to understeer and it's going to go to the yeah. front brake bias as a safety measure. What you would like is a little more rear bias. I would like a little more rear bias. Because then you got all but the floors locked up and me, that's more braking. But probably drives better than your average Joe in yeah. that instance. So the brakes are working correctly. If we want to have more rear, we got to yep. get an adjustable bias uh, proportioning valve, put it in the rear. Yep. And then when you're off-roading and stuff, 
then uh, you can adjust. And then you want a little yeah. rear so you can drag. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. But they lock up. It certainly stopped. So yeah, I'm happy. I call good. it a win. Uh, they would not lock up before. It didn't matter how hard. Well, you saw in Moab. Yeah, it was soft. Yeah, it was right. wicked soft. So Brakes are done. Call that a win. Next episode, we are going to pull the intake because we have this massive vacuum leak. We're going to fix power steering belt. Uh, what else was on the list? We're going to order parts. We're going to order parts. Yeah. We need to sit down and figure out exactly how we want to build this. Lockers, wheels, tires. Tires, um, sliders, bumpers, yeah. winch. Put some cool stuff on it and then take it out and go off-road. Take it out and go get it stuck. That's it for this episode. Please like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching. Whee! You can Keep feel going. it, right? Yeah. Yep. Keep going. My calf's going to look great. <laughs> I'm going to cut off one pant leg. <laughs>